Faisal Kamisa, Ben Nicholson, Smith kicking it with you. We are here to talk Nate Pearson, the Blue Jays' top-ranked pitching prospect who has taken the baseball world by storm of sorts this year. Recently promoted Ben to Triple A. His Double A pitching coach believes he could pitch in the majors right now. That might be a bit too optimistic, but it does speak to the growth that Pearson, as a player and as a prospect, has kind of gone through this last season. I think you'd find a lot of people who would agree with that assessment. Really, it's not hard to imagine that Nate Pearson could come to the majors right now and get a lot of people out with that fastball, he's got good off-speed stuff, and really has evolved as a pitcher too. So he's not going to be in the major leagues just yet. AAA is the next frontier, and he might not be in the major leagues until next season, but I think when you look at the performance that he's had and really one of the game's best prospects, you can make that case pretty convincingly. So what do you have to see from a pitcher when he gets the call up like that? We know um, you know, he was dominating in single A, went to double A, obviously it's not gonna be as easy, but a sub three ERA in 16 starts is very impressive for a guy in his first stint there. What are the differences between double A AA and triple A in terms of a pitcher? Well, one of the big differences this year is actually the ball. We've mm. seen almost record home, home run numbers at AAA this season. So that will be a challenge for Pearson when he's facing not only hitters who are more advanced, but a ball that's just flying out of the ballpark really at the same rate that you see from the major league ball. So this is going to be tough for any pitcher, um, any young pitcher coming up. And for Pearson, those home runs could be a challenge for him. There's always a risk when you have a hard thrower like Pearson. He tops 100 consistently on the gun. He's a guy that we know was injured last season because of an arm issue. What do the Jays have to do in terms of, quote-unquote, load managing uh, the Nate Pearson workload so he is as optimal as he can be when he does get to the majors eventually? Yeah, it's a huge question when you're talking about any big-time pitching prospect. So for the Jays, they're looking at someone who last year pitched just 21 innings. This year, he's up to 83, 84, entering that first start at AAA. So he's still relatively on, on a cautious workload. I don't think the Jays want to push it too, too far. So I think that's one reason that he's unlikely to be up with the team in September, is the workload is already approaching a record amount for Pearson. I think they'll choose to be cautious. So put your prognosticator hat on a little bit. This time next season, August 2020, Nate Pearson is where? Oh, he should be in the majors, okay. yeah, I think. And it, it might take him until the early part of next season, but I think that it's very reasonable to expect him in the major leagues. Obviously, the expectations are going to be high, and we have to be cautious when it comes to setting expectations for these guys. But I think that Pearson could pitch in the majors now. I think that by next year, he'll be a very good pitcher on the Blue Jays' staff. Not necessarily at his full potential already, but I think he'll be one of their best pitchers from the moment he gets to the major leagues. And on this staff, there's not exactly a ton of competition on that regard. Right now, though, Nate Pearson joins Triple A, where he will... Uh, be a teammate with TJ Zoic. He had a no-hitter for the Buffalo Bisons this week as well. In terms of other pitching prospects, Ben, uh, where else can Jays fans look for some optimism ahead of next season? Like you said, Faisal, Zoic had a really good start, so that's an encouraging sign. I think beyond that, you would look to guys like Patrick Murphy, who's been dealing with some injuries and re reworking his delivery. Um, but you've got a lot of arms coming up through the system. The Blue Jays say that some of them are going to surprise us and become better than they've shown so far. We'll see if that happens. Yeah, they have to say that right now. In terms of rounding out a pitching staff for next season or the season after, where do you think they go in terms of free agents and how attractive is Toronto knowing that the hitters will probably be there, the offense will probably be there, but you just need a couple pitchers to kind of round out that staff. How do the Jays kind of rank up in terms of destinations for uh, free agent pitchers? I think they'd be toward the bottom of the yeah. league as far as being an attractive spot to go. I mean, AL East, Yankees, Red Sox, these parks are small. Um, and the Blue Jays, as much as they have potential, are not currently a contending team. So I think they'd be a bottom 10 destination. That being said, if you pay, if you are willing to spend, then you could attract uh, anyone. So I, I don't think the Jays will be in that top, top tier going after Bannison Bumgarner and Garrett Cole, but maybe Zach Wheeler, Rick Porcello, Wade Miley, that next tier could be of interest to the Blue Jays.